Ah, Venice. Beautiful city. Beautiful Venezia. It's beautiful any time in the morning and the afternoon. That's the Grand Canal. And then this is the second hotel we stayed at. Del Orogio, the clock hotel. Um, anyway, we had a great time. And what a way to end this trip. Uh, to get there, actually, we started in Rome, and we took a train uh, from Rome. It's only about three or four hours, and the reason that she's kissing me there is because I'm taking her to get a snack in the snack car. Man, I'm telling you, these kids and snacks, they are like TARDIS machines. They fit so many snacks inside. So the first hotel we stayed at, this was the Boscolo, up in the north side of the city. I'm charging all my stuff up. That's always the first thing I do is I plug in everything and start charging things up. Then we went out to St. Mark's Square, and I was trying to get the girls to get a pigeon. I was holding out my Osmo, and then a pigeon landed on me. Um, I'm not a huge fan of birds. I'm not a big bird guy. Wing flapping always really bothers me. Here, I was trying to get Scarlett to pretend to throw food on it, but I think we offended an Asian family, and they left like she was shooing them away. I, this is a really cool place in Doge's Palace where you can accuse someone of doing something and they get arrested by the state. And of course, we had to go to all the touristy things. You gotta do a gondola. In Venice, don't you? That was the Rialto Bridge over there. Um, that's one of the water taxis that goes around. Um, man, it's great. I just love taking photos here. Um, it's Carnival. It's just the time when everyone dresses up in masks and there's all these mask shops all over the place. Such a variety. There's all these weird steampunky ones that are always kind of creepy. Um, all masks are kind of creepy, I guess. That's kind of the point. Everyone had fun trying them on, except for Ethan, who was being a stoic teenager there. Uh, this is the northern part of the city, really beautiful area. Then we took a little boat um, over to Murano, where they make the glass. And this guy gave us a little glass-making demonstration. Um, I've always wanted to learn to do this. I think it looks really fun. Uh, he made a vase, uh, wowed the kids. We need to see how, how they do this kind of stuff. Then he made a horse of all things, like this amazing horse. I don't know how the heck you pull glass into a horse, but this guy did it, I tell you. All right, so then time for the next spot. There's, man, we got so lost all over Venice, but it's great. What a place to be lost. Eventually, we made it to this mask making class, and it was totally fun. And we all got to make masks. Tina was feeling a little sick this day, so she didn't come along. Um, but the kids really got into it. and. Saw a little uh, lesson on the history of masks and how it was lost for hundreds of years and now it's back. And then she decided to freak out the kids and put them that thing. Me and Ethan went to go pick out our masks that we were going to paint. Um, those are the ones we were working on. You would put on layers of paint and then you would dry it. Um, Ethan got really into it, which was neat, you know. You never know what he's going to get into, but he spent hours working on his mask. And so did the girls. Really fun. I don't know how we get these things back to New Zealand without breaking them, but we'll do our best. Um, we couldn't get the mask off the girls. They were wearing them nonstop. It was great, really great. Uh, so we got to wear those for the rest of our trip, and you know, the girls really got into it. Now back, we switched hotels. This is the second hotel. This is actually the same hotel we're doing our upcoming photo workshop in. So the kids head out, and then I stay here for another two weeks to record some videos. And and do the workshop and more carnival action. That was Ethan most of the time walking around Venice staring at his iPad playing games. <laughs> really getting the full Venice experience there, you know. Here we are going over the Rialto Bridge. It's just a massive amount of walking. I have my little pedometer going. I think we're going 12, 13,000 steps a day. Um, here we are at this really cool little semi-French restaurant called the Bistro of Venice. Really great. Here's a secret find. Okay, this is a bookstore, right? There's always this thing saying, Atande, wait, you can't get inside. But there is a secret button up here. So if you press that secret button, um, you get right in there. Um, it's kind of very Harry Potter-esque, kind of one of those Diagon Alley kind of bookstores. Um, really kind of cool, creepy art, uh, secret books. There's a Ouija board, um, all kinds of sketchbooks, creepy skeletons around. Um, I thought the girls might be weirded out, but they loved it. We got them a couple of these sketchbooks. We hung out here probably half an hour just poking around. and I think the lady was afraid that we weren't going to buy anything, that we were just using up her time. But we, we did end up getting a few, tea, a few things. Awesome store. This is my favorite gelato place, Vinci. 
Uh, Scarlet was the queen of gelato, and it's her job every day to make sure we got gelato and we had to try a different kind. So then our last night here, walked through the streets, another few thousand steps to go to this really cool um, concert, concert in the old church. There's about seven people playing on stringed instruments, and I'll just leave you with this, a little bit of the Vivaldi Four Seasons as we held hands on our last night's events. Thank you.